Never Stop Learning, week 310. We're going to take a quick look at 3D Sphere Art Mapping in Adobe Illustrator CC 2017. All right, so big shout out to Kana Messer. She was actually on my Twitch channel earlier today, and she showed me some cool techniques uh, for art mapping on a 3D sphere. So I figured I'd share them with you guys today. Now, this video is going to be a little bit longer than the ones I normally make, and that's because there's so many steps involved, and I'm actually going to go through everything starting from scratch. And I'm also going to show you guys some uh, workflow tips along the way. All right, so if you take a look at the screen, this is pretty much what we're going to be creating here uh, or something similar to it. Now, the reason I'm really excited about this is when you select the artwork, you go into your appearance panel, click on the effect, and check this out. You can actually reposition your artwork. Isn't that cool? It's just you can reuse the same piece over and over again or in different ways for the same campaign. All right, so I'm going to hit cancel out of that. Now, let's start. The beginning, hit Command N. All right, that's going to create a new document. If you're on a PC, it's Control N. Now, I'm just using one of the basic profiles. The size of my document is going to be 1280 by 800, and it's an RGB document. All right, I'm going to hit Enter, and that's going to create the new document for me. All right, now, I like to just see nothing but white screen, so I want to actually hide the edges of my artboard. So to hide the artboards, just hit Command-Shift-H. For PCs, it's Control Shift H. All right, great. So now I'm ready to start drawing. The first thing I want to build is the 3D sphere. So I hit the L key on my keyboard. That's going to give me the ellipse tool. Down in the bottom left, I'm going to click and drag up towards the upper right corner with the Shift key held down. The Shift key is going to make sure that it's a uh, clean circle like this. All right, if you want to reposition it, bring in the space bar. That's going to allow you to uh, reposition the shape. All right, that looks good. So I'll get rid of the space bar. Just move this over to get a larger circle. And then release the mouse, then the modifier. All right, cool. So I'm going to make some changes to the appearance here. All right, so if you take a look at the tools panel down on the bottom left, currently I have my stroke activated. All right, so I'm going to hit the forward slash key that actually shares the same spot as the uh, question mark does on an American English keyboard. All right, so if I hit the X key, that's going to bring up the fill, and I want to change the color of the fill. So I'm going to hit the comma key, and that brings up the color panel. Now in here, I could just choose any of these colors, but I actually want to work with swatches. So it's this guy over here. Let me just pull it out. All right, great. Now I'm going to hit the comma key. That brings up the color panel. So why not add the swatches panel to it? That way it'll always come along for the ride. All right, cool. So over here, I'm going to hit uh, magenta swatch. All right, so that's going to add the color to my fill. And we're going to have a magenta sphere to start off with. All right, now I need to actually cut this guy in half. All right, so I'm going to hit the C key, and that's going to give me the scissor tool. Over here at the top at the 12 o'clock position, I'm going to click there once. All right, so I've already made a cut here. This is actually starting to be a split circle. Down at the bottom at the 6 o'clock position, one more click. All right, so now this guy's cut in half, and only the right side is selected. So I'm going to hit the delete key a couple times. There we go. And now I'm just left with the left half. All right. Uh, Command A is going to select all the artwork I have in here, and now I'm ready to apply my 3D effect. All right, space bar, click and drag. Over here at the top, effect. Scroll through to find 3D and then choose Revolve. All right, once you hit Preview, you see your first result. Now, because I chose the left side, and if you take a look over here in the Revolve section, it says we're going to revolve from the left edge. So it's kind of creating a little bit of a trash can there. So I'll go in the drop-down menu and choose Right Edge. Okay, so now it's uh, revolving it uh, the right direction, and it looks great. So depending on which one you start off with, you might need to change this. Just uh, jump in here and make the change you need to get the exact look you're going for. All right, down here at the bottom, that's where we find Map Art. When you click on that, it brings up this cool grid, and over here at the top for Symbol. When I click the drop-down menu, uh, it shows me a list of the symbols that I have loaded, but I don't really think I want to load any of these onto this sphere. So let's back out of here, 
and give us some better symbols to play with. All right, so I'm gonna hit cancel. All right, so in here, I actually wanna keep the sphere, so I'll click OK, and that's gonna apply that 3D effect to that. Awesome. All right, now let's talk about symbols. I have mine over here. I'm using the Essentials Workspace. Uh, basically, it's the workspace that you start off with uh, as soon as you install Illustrator on the machine. All right, now I wanna get rid of these symbols. So instead of deleting them one at a time, I'm gonna come over here into the Flyout menu and then choose Select All Unused. All right, clicking on that once selects all of these symbols. I'm gonna grab one, click and drag, and dump it in the trash can. All right, cool. So that's gonna keep things organized for me and it's also gonna help save on file size. All right, now I'm gonna create a new symbol and let's get started over here. So I'm gonna hit the M key, click and drag. I'm just creating a rectangle here. All right, something like that. Now I wanna zoom in just to make this guy a little bit smaller. All right, I'm using the same tool, click and drag. There we go. All right, now I need to make uh, two more of these guys. So I'm gonna hit the V key to grab my selection tool. Option. Notice I'm holding down option and I have a double headed arrow. All right, so if I click and drag, I'm gonna make a copy of that, but I'm gonna hold down the shift key to make sure it's nice and straight. Then I'm gonna let go of the mouse, then the modifiers. All right, that looks good. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna hit Command D. You could hit uh, Control D on a PC, and that's gonna duplicate the last transformation you made. So for, for me, it was actually a copy and a move. So there we go. So that's just gonna ensure that I have equal spacing here. All right, this looks good. Now, I can play around with this some more. I'm gonna zoom in on this guy right here, select, and just make this a little bit thicker. So click and drag, but I want it to grow out from the center, so I'm gonna use the option modifier. All right, it's gonna be Alt on a PC. And release, so there we go. It's uh, just slightly thicker than the other ones. And you don't have to do that, I'm just kinda of playing around with it to get different looks. All right, so this guy in the middle, let's give it a different color. So I'm gonna hit the comma key, over here my swatches, and I'll go with blue. All right, these guys over here on the edge, shift, click, drag. I'm gonna turn these guys yellow. All right, that seems to look cool. I'll grab all three over here at the top, object, blend, and then choose make. And notice there's a keyboard shortcut of command option B. All right, so I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna make a smooth blend there for me. All right, now a quick way to bring up the options uh, is to just hit the W key, which is gonna activate the blend tool for you. All right, because you have the tool activated, if you hit enter or return on your keyboard, it's gonna bring up the blend options. Now, it took me a long time to actually explain it, but uh, if you have it recorded to memory and just hit the keys, you go through the process really quickly. All right, so now that we're in here in the blend options, first thing you wanna do is turn on the preview. All right, and over here for spacing, I'm gonna switch over to specified steps. All right, I'm gonna drop that number down to about 10. All right, that looks good. I'll come back in here and I'm gonna use the down arrow key. All right, something like that. Looks cool, play around with it a little bit and then click OK. All right, so I have this blend set up. All right, keep that in mind. This is actually a blend here. So I'm gonna bring up my symbols panel and if you need to find any of these panels that I've been jumping into, just go into the window menu and scroll through. They're in here in alphabetical order. All right, now back to the symbols. To create one, all you have to do is hit this icon over here in the bottom right corner of the symbols panel, or if you actually wanna see it happen, just click and drag and pretend you're like dumping it into your symbols drawer. All right, cool, so your symbols options come up. Now in here, you wanna give it a name to keep things organized. So I'll go with lines one. That way I know exactly what it is. It's my first symbol uh, of lines. All right, great. Now uh, down over here, because we're working with the blend, and I actually wanna hold on to that blend a little bit longer, I'm gonna switch from dynamic symbols to static symbols. Uh, dynamics, uh, if you want a dynamic symbol, it'll actually have to expand the blend before you create it. So I'm gonna click OK, and I've got a static uh, symbol that has a blend inside. 
So I don't need this guy anymore. Go ahead and delete. All right, cool. Now we have something we could map. So let's jump back in here. I'm excited. I'll grab this guy, go into the appearance panel, find the 3D revolve, click on the link, and then hit preview. All right, down over here at the bottom, map art. And let's go into the symbols drop down menu. Now we only have the single symbol, the one we just created. So that's keeping things nice and organized for us. All right, so click on that and it doesn't really look that good. Now you could actually just uh, use this transformation box and try to fill it out however you want. I like to just hit this one here at the bottom. It says scale to fit. Click on that button and it just takes care of everything for you. All right, so I'll click okay. That looks good. Now remember you could reposition things. So here we are. I'm just changing the value in here. You could do it numerically. You could do it by uh, clicking on this wheel here or by physically just grabbing this and moving it around. But this looks great. I'm really happy with how this looks. I don't have to kind of guess how the lines are. I could actually just create the symbol and it takes care of everything for me. Because if I had if I had to create this by hand, uh, I think it, it would take me a really long time. So this is a huge time saver here. All right, so I click OK, and that's great. That's awesome, but there's actually more to it. And that's why I was saying this is a longer video than normal. All right, so I've got this guy ready to go back in the symbols panel. Now, I actually want to make a copy of this one. So I'll bring it over here because I want to keep the original. Uh, now I'm starting to create a library of symbols. All right, so let's actually see which one we're using. All right, so when I hover over this, let me see. Uh, does it give me any info? This is lines two. All right, now let's double click on this guy over here on the left. This is lines one. All right, so let's play around with lines two. Now double click on that. Now, I'm taking a look at this. Let's uh, double click on this guy. This is actually a blend still. So I'm able to target one of these guys. Now, let's make a color change. I'm gonna hit the comma key back in the swatches. Let's see. There we go. It takes care of the blend for me. All right. So I'm just going to double click on the artboard and nothing happens here. Well, let's go in and find that effect. All right. Great. Hit preview. Now we actually have to apply lines two. All right. So there we go. Scale to fit. There we go. That looks great. Click OK, and we have our new symbol applied there. You can also modify that existing symbol. So let's go back in there, double click on lines, and uh, let me see. Let's go with a different color. All right, so over here at the top, I'm going to turn this one blue like we had earlier. And I'll do the same with this one. Now, the colors aren't going to be great, but I'm just doing this to kind of show you the workflow. All right, double click on the artboard and it does not update. Now I've seen it actually update on some machines, so it might be just an issue I'm having on this particular setup. Yours might actually update automatically. What I have to do is I have to go back into the appearance panel, choose my effect, and when I hit preview, that's when I see it updated. All right, so that's cool. I just wanted to show you how to do that. Now, one more thing, let's take this a little bit further. All right, so this is just some more workflow stuff. I had to add this at the top just because I, I thought it was really cool. All right, so let's double click on the symbol we created. All right, now I wanna go with, uh, let's say all blue uh, lines here. So I'm just gonna select all of my artwork, hit the comma key, swatches, there we go, great. All right, so I've got all these lines here and I'm going to select my artwork because this is a blend. Uh, I'm actually going to expand this now. So object, expand. I need to get in there and really play around with these vectors. All right, so uh, now that I have uh, just shapes in here, I want to go into the effect menu over here at the top and I want to choose distort and transform. All right, so shout out to Hana. She showed me uh, zigzag again today. It's a effect I haven't played with in a really long time and I was getting some really cool results with it. So I wanted to share with you guys. All right, so remember you gotta hit preview and now you're starting to see like it's starting to create some zigzag lines here, right? Cool. Let's come over here to the top for options. Now I'm just gonna hit the up arrow key 
check that out. Those um, those peaks and valleys, they're starting to rise and fall. So it's uh, we're actually starting to create more depth there. So you go through there and pick pick the exact look you're going for. Now, currently I only have let's say uh, three peaks over here at the top. So and then we have these little points down over here. Now when we start adding segments, I'm gonna click over here. Oh, actually check this out. Notice everything looks weird. That's because I have an, an odd number here. When I go up to 24, now you see the zigzags. All right, but look, the number of uh, peaks has increased over here along the top and the same goes for the bottom. So I'm just gonna go through, bring this guy down. Something like that looks pretty clean, but this is where you would play around with it. If you get this result, it just means you have uh, odd numbers. Add it even and you'll be good. All right, this works good. I'm gonna click OK, I'm happy with this. Uh, but again, I need to get in there and actually work with the vectors. So I need to expand this one. I'll go to Object, Expand Appearance. All right, and we're good. All right, now I need some shape building. So I'm going to convert this into a seamless pattern, basically. So to keep things easy for me, I'm going to focus on these peaks. So over here on the top left and over here on the top right. And you'll see what I mean as I start to play with this. All right, for shape building, I need some uh, shapes. So I hit the M key to activate the rectangle tool. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag just to create a nice big shape. There we go. With the same tool in the Creative Cloud, you could actually resize it, which is an awesome handy little feature. And I'm gonna use uh, the smart guides to get me right at that anchor point that's at the peak of uh, my artwork right here. All right, so I'm gonna release, great. Now I'm gonna create another shape over here in a similar fashion. Click and drag, and again, I'm gonna focus on that peak. I just wanna cut that peak in half. I'll grab this center guy, click and drag. Right there where it says anchor, release. All right, so if you look at it, I'm cutting that peak in half so that when it wraps around, they'll meet up and complete the, uh, the pattern for me. All right, so I'm gonna hit Command A. That's gonna select all the artwork. All right, Shift M is my shape builder. Now I'm gonna hit the Shift key and the Option key. Now if you're using a PC, it's Shift and Alt. Click and drag. As I go through, I have this like, almost like a marquee selection, but basically what I'm saying is, anything that's in this marquee, once I release my mouse, is gonna go away. All right, Command A to select everybody. I still have the shape builder tool activated. So Shift, Option, click drag and then release. All right, this looks good. If I zoom in, notice this guy on the left is gonna meet up with this guy on the right and that's gonna complete my pattern for me. All right, so I'm gonna hit the V key and then double click on the artboard. All right, let's zoom out. There's no update yet. So let's select the artwork. Then over here in the appearance panel, click on that effect and then hit preview. All right, so my artwork's updated, but it doesn't look all that great, right? We have to resize this guy because I changed the size of the artwork. So click on Map Art, and then remember this guy? Scale to Fit. Click on that once, and then that wraps it all the way around for us. All right, I'm gonna click OK. Now let's see. I wanna bring this guy over just so I could look at it. See, I, I had uh, less ridges on this one, so it looks like I have uh, less petals compared to the other one. All right, so I'm gonna click OK, and that looks good. Now, if I hit Command-Y, Control-Y on a PC, that's gonna show us that this is all the vectors we have here. We just basically have one path here. All right, so Command-Y. Let's select that path, and this time I wanna change the fill. All right, so this time I'll go with something yellow, and there we go, and that changes everything for us. Remember, you could always go back in there, in the Appearance panel, Revolve, Preview, all right? And then just come in here and make the adjustments that you need to get the exact look that you're going for. So there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at 3D Sphere art mapping in Adobe Illustrator CC 2017.